Hi, my name is Linda Stone. I'm the owner of City Flowers in New Buffalo, Michigan. Today I'm going to show you how to make a tropical arrangement using where you have some red ginger, orchids, uh, snapdragons, bird of paradise, some more unusual flowers. So we're going to get started. I have just a plastic utility container here. You can get these at craft stores. And we're going to use our Oasis wet foam. There's wet and dry Oasis, so always make sure you get the right one for what you're doing. Um, before we soak this, I'm going to bevel this just because these stems on the bird of paradise and the ginger are so thick that I don't want this sharp edge here. So I'm just going to take a paring knife and widen and soften this edge right here. And it's easier to do this before your foam is wet. Um, once it's wet, you got the water squishing out all over the place. So. Okay, so we've beveled the edges of that. If you've never worked with Oasis before, you're going to just drop it into a container of water and let it soak. You don't want to force it down. You don't want to submerge it because it'll trap air. And I did not fill my pan with water. I might have to tip it a little bit. It takes a few minutes for this to soak. Make sure when you're doing tropicals that you're using... Um, the standard oasis. There is a, um, oh, I forget what they call it, uh, a softer version of it. I don't remember the name of it right now, but um, it will hold softer stemmed flowers, but it will really break out if you're using um, the, long, the heavier stems like ginger and bird of paradise. So you want to get the standard oasis. I'm going to just tip my pan of water here so it gets down at the end and this finishes soaking. You can tell when it's done just by the way it changes color. Okay, we've got our black soaked. And put it right into the container. I'm going to take just a minute to move this pan out of the way so that I can bring my flowers over here. Okay, now the first thing when you're using Oasis is you want to tape it in the container so that it doesn't fall out if somebody tips it. So we're going to use Oasis wet tape. This is quarter inch and I'm just going to go diagonal. Make sure that you don't touch the end of the tape with your fingers because the oils from your fingers will make the tape not stick. So just want to secure it in there. I know I have to touch the end right here to get it started, but I'm just going to fasten it to the container below and then just cut it off from the other side without touching it. Okay, so we've got our tape stuck. First thing I'm going to do now before I do flowers is start greening. Um, greening is a process of just covering your foam with various types of greens. I have tree fern here. I'm just going to snip some of these laterals off, positioning these at the edge of the container. It's also handy to have a waste basket right by you so you can throw all your scrap in there and you can avoid. He's going to play in that water. My dog is playing in the pan of water that I set down on the floor from, from the uh, foam soaking. She, her name is Bubbles, so appropriate. Okay, this one here is called Seeded Eucalyptus. I like this for the berries on it. I think it's a very interesting foliage. Although I do, in this case, I don't want it too long, so I'm going to have to scale back. But then I can use these leaves in here, too, in a separate place. The idea is just to cover the edges of the foam, the green part of the foam that you would see in the arrangement. And we're just kind of mixing and matching our greens here. No certain way that you have to use these greens. You can... Use any kind of greens just to get a green foliage base for your flowers. Put that in. I've got some regular spiral eucalyptus as well that I'm going to use. 
And some of this, you want to strip the end of this off though because you don't want any foliage into the foam. Um, some of these I'm going to stand upright. Just a couple of them here. Sometimes working in threes is a good way to do things. Not that it's a hard and fast rule that you always have to work in uneven numbers like a lot of people think. Um, but it gives you a, a nice triangle effect or kind of rounds off the look so that it looks balanced. And I like things a little bit more asymmetrical. I don't like all of my greens to just end at the same point or all my flowers. I think some sides can stick out a little longer than other sides. You know, it, it adds more interest, visual interest to the arrangement when you look at it. Okay. And now I'm going to put in some of this rustus. And I'm going to snip this. This is a nice foliage for when you want a little bit of flow and movement to it. Kind of once you cut it, you have laterals that go all different directions. <laughs> I'm losing it. The dog is making me nuts here. You can probably hear her scratching on the pan. But... If you've seen my videos before, you've gotten to know Bubbles a little bit. She's quite a character. Bubbles, look at the camera. <laughs> She's too intent on having her face in the water. <laughs> People will start watching the videos to see Bubbles instead of the flower arranging. That's okay, just keep watching. I appreciate those of you who have come back and been here before. And if you've never been here before, I appreciate you too. Okay, so we've got our foam pretty well covered here where we're not really seeing much of that. There might be little places, but once we get the flowers in there, we'll be good with that. Okay, so I'm going to start with my largest one this time, which is the ginger. And you may need heavier cutters to cut these thicker stems. So I'm going to put a ginger here. I'm going to use three of these. I have five, but I'm not using them all in this one. And then I'm going to go off to the side with this one. And I'm going to cut this one a little bit shorter. And I am leaving the leaves, the foliage on this because it's an interesting um, foliage and it, it will not be under the water. One of the things I want to point out is how you face the flower. I would not put this ginger going this way because it's not the natural curve of it is to bend to the outside. So we want to put it in the foam so that it flows that direction. So all of these flow out from the center. Um, if you're doing something where like an orchid for instance, which I'll put in a little bit later, um, you can tell obviously that they have a face the way that they went to the sun. This is the back side of it. So keep that in mind. Keep also in mind the curvature of the flower when you're putting it in there. You wouldn't want to put this one going this way. It looks unnatural. It grew this way out. So that's the way that you want to make sure that you place them in the arrangements. Okay, now we've got the bird of paradise here. And these are just starting to open. They're not they're not quite the the position that I wanted them to be in for this. But I'm gonna show you a little trick in just a moment on how to open these. Put these kind of triangular opposite from the the uh, ginger that I have in there. Okay, so we're going to put the fourth bird of paradise right in the center here. This, what this does to your eye is creates 
a line here and you also have a, a smaller line going this way. So in this case, I used four. Um, like I said, it's not always imperative that you only use odd numbers. Some people think that, but it isn't the truth. So I wanted to show you for these Bird of Paradise, a lot of times you get them and they're not open. And what you have to do is just gradually take this little seam right here and separate it. Just pull it out and that allows the flower to start popping out, which is what I did on these other ones before because they were they come in really tight. So that will help your flowers to open up and be the beautiful specimens that they are. Okay, so we've got those in there. It's starting to shape up. I am gonna add some snapdragons. This customer wants bright colors in here. I'm gonna put a few of our yellow snapdragons. Again, stripping the foliage before you put it in there. And I also wanna mention if you are new and you've never seen these videos, Make sure that when you're working with Oasis, you don't push stuff in, pull it out. I know in the beginning that's very easy to do because um, you're unsure and you want to try to move it, especially not your heavy stemmed flowers like ginger and birds. You, you don't want to put the flower back in the same hole. So the more holes you make in there, you can crack out your foam if you are not careful. So you want to put those in once and leave them. And optimally, you want to do that for every flower, but sometimes even I still have to pull one out and just reposition it because it didn't go quite the way I wanted it to. Okay, we're going to put a snapdragon here. And I'm hitting the stem on that bird, so I may have to move that one just a little bit. Again, pay attention to... Oh, I just broke it. I bent it, I didn't break it, but I'm gonna have to cut it above that now, which is still fine. I just may angle it differently now. I'll put it here so it's a little bit lower. And then we'll do this one in that spot. Pay attention to how they go, like this one faces this way. You don't want it facing inward, you want, it, you want that bend facing outward. So we'll put that one right there. Okay. Off this. I like to just keep my workspace free of all the debris that I'm cutting off. All right, so this customer asked for some roses. Normally I don't pair roses with tropicals, but you can. And in flower design, almost anything goes. And you just want to look at your roses, and if there's any bruised petals on the outside of them, you want to pluck those off. We're going to do a line with our roses. And we're going to have to be careful when you get those heavy stem flowers in there that I can feel that I'm hitting that stem. So I have to move this one a little bit before I push it into the foam, find the right spot for it. other one right here. Again, paying attention to the face of the flower so that each thing faces up the way you want it to be seen. All right, I've got two more things I'm going to put in there. This is a Dendrobium Orchid. I'm going to add a few of these. These are a very um, long-lasting orchid in arrangements, so you see them in, in arrangements quite often, more so than most of the other types of orchids. And I don't like the way that one went into the foam, so I'm going to take that one out and reposition it. That's better. Now this arrangement will typically be more one-sided. By that I mean I am not really filling out a lot in the back. It's it's covered, you don't see the foam, but I'm not doing flowers way out here. If the flowers in the back are just going to be more upright to finish it off, and it will be more of a one-sided arrangement. 
always cut your flowers at an angle makes it if you cut them flat the flat side goes right against the bottom of the container and it inhibits the water uptake okay so we have a line going of the orchids that way and now i'm going to put a couple more down at the bottom and if for some reason which i may show you in just one second that this could look too long possibly for where i want it which this one is not but if it were i could snip this back to about right here and it would not be noticeable i might be able to show you that on the next one because this one i don't want sticking out quite as far This one's a little bit, I want this one a little bit shorter than my bird. So I'm going to go right to this bud right here and just snip that off at an angle. And you can't even tell. So you can always make that work with orchids. I'm going to put one more on the other side here. They're tangled up a little bit. Well... We'll take one that wants to come, maybe. Does anybody want to come? There. Okay. Orchids are hard to use in a vase arrangement because the nicest blooms are all down at the bottom. So when you're putting them in a vase, as you see here, um, you have to use, just let them be way at the top and then they're all flowing outward. So sometimes they're a little bit harder to arrange in a vase. Okay, and I like the length on that one, so I'm going to leave it. The last thing we're going to add is some white hypericum berry. I'm going to leave the foliage that I can, but not the foliage that would be under the water. This is just a little filler. If you want to um, practice doing this, I would say even if you don't do tropicals, you can kind of practice with less expensive flowers, getting the same look, the visual. And then, you know, as you improve with your design skills, you can always start adding in different flowers, more expensive flowers, um, because tropicals are a little bit pricey to just play with, but you can certainly use other flowers. It's, it's all whatever you like, whatever, you find appealing as far as color and I just suggest using different textures that's why I like to add the berries and the snapdragons and, and some roses that are mass or something that is a different shape and different texture than than just the linear bird of paradise and the ginger and the orchids. I'm going to put the last one right there and we have our completed tropical arrangement. I hope you like the arrangement. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you for the next one. Thanks for coming.